I have talked for three years about the growing chorus of countries uniting under a common theme, and that is removal from the Western hegemony and the Western hypocrisy and, and the, all that goes along with it, the sanctions, the bullying, the bombing, all of the things that has made much of the world look differently at the United States from what it once did. And, and the linchpin of that, obviously, has been Saudi Arabia. We talked about for three years, before anyone was talking about this, the significance of the Belt Road Initiative, the significance of gold being reclassified tier one, the only other one in the world by the Bank of International Settlements. We talked about the ramifications of the day we left Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia signing a joint military cooperation agreement with Russia. It's huge. I started screaming, this is it. Because after all, it is the protection of the Saudi kingdom and the promise that the Saudis made by extension that OPEC would value oil globally in dollars for that protection. The day we left Afghanistan, the agreement was signed between Russia and Saudi Arabia, which was the beginning of the end of the petrodollar. Subsequently, Saudi Arabia has joined the BRICS nations, the, this massive group, Brazil, Russia, China, India, South Africa, plus 60 plus other countries who are vying for have already applied to the BRICS plus, including our allies to the South, Mexico. The ramifications of Saudi Arabia moving to a currency or a group that has promised to issue a new reserve currency pegged to commodities. After all, what is gold? The only other tier one reserve asset. Who's been accumulating all the gold? Not just the BRICS countries who are the largest producers and accumulators, but countries like Turkey, our ally, who last year bought more gold than anyone in the world and is continuing that year in 2023 with massive acquisition in January. In fact, central banks in 2022, Kerry, bought more gold than any time since 67, the second most in history. And those numbers in January here in 2023 are doubling down. A month-over-month -month increase of 196% from December. They are amplifying their efforts to de-dollarize and accumulate gold using the Western suppression of price to support the bond market, being scam, as cover. Now, it grows by the day, these things that are happening outside the country, including Saudi Arabia, now applying for the Shanghai Cooperation Organization as a dialogue partner. It is the first step to full membership. They are a military organization as well, a very large military organization anchored by the Chinese army. So you have, on one hand, uh, Saudi Arabia being protected by Russia, and now, by extension, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization being protected by China and Africa. You have what is, in essence, the beginning of the end of the petrodollar. First, they must position themselves so that they don't end up like Libya and Iraq did when they both threatened to sell their oil for gold and euro. But to be positioned and protected by the majority of the world's population and two very large armies, you can see the handwriting on the wall. It's bad enough that Saudi Arabia is moving away from the West and what is the dollar hegemony, the right to only price oil in dollars, that's coming to an end. But when we see our neighbors like Mexico formerly applied to BRICS, when we see France just the other day do a massive liquid natural gas deal with the UAV and, and uh, China to be paid for in Yuan, bad enough we see that, but Macron just left China and signed a 51-point treaty agreement range you from 5G technology to military engagement, where Macron came out and publicly said that we must distance ourselves from the U.S. and its problems with China and Taiwan, where we can't even in Europe fix the problem in the Ukraine. Why should we think we can have any significant impact on what is happening in Taiwan? People in Europe are complaining about the U.S. sanctions, not just on countries like Russia, and Iran, but in corporations and companies who deal with other countries that the U.S. deems inappropriate, such as the French bank that was fined almost $4 billion a few years ago for trading with Iran, before I talk about what's happening inside the country. As is common in France and many other European countries, the French president's office, known as the Elise Palace, insisted on checking and proofreading all of the president's quotes to be published in this article as a condition of granting the interview. This violates political editorial standards and policy, but we agreed to the terms in order to speak directly with the French president. Politico insisted that it cannot deceive its readers and would not publish anything the president did not say. The quotes in this article were all actually said by the president, but 
some parts of the interview in which the president spoke even more frankly about Taiwan and Europe's strategic autonomy were cut out by the elites. You have our allies quietly leaving the room, and this is very troubling. What happens when all of these countries are coordinated sufficiently enough with commodities, with military relationships, with strategic relationships, such as Iran and Saudi Arabia, mending fences. Sunni and Shiite hated each other for centuries, but are now, as a peace deal brokered by the Chinese, sitting at the table and putting embassies in each other's countries to mend fences. Because after all, my enemy's enemy is my friend. This is their one shot to break free of the centuries Whole hegemony, not just by the U.S., but the West in general, Europe before that. They're breaking free. They realize that a system dominated by commodities and transparency, a la those commodities that each country will pledge to the new BRICS currency or to the new Shanghai cooperation settlement currency, will be pegged to gold and other commodities, the veracity of which will be shown on a distributed ledger. I believe the successful four-year trial of the digital yuan. When that happens, it is a religious exper experience as dollars are globally dumped as no longer will they need to only take dollars for oil. Since 74, every country on the planet's had to own it. It's created a synthetic demand for the dollar. Those days are coming to an end. And when those dollars come rushing home because they no longer are needed to buy oil, the world will dump them as fast as you can say, don't. And the byproduct of, of those dollars flooding home will be interest rates that go to the moon to compensate for hyperinflation, which is the great reset. Stocks, bonds, real estate, and the dollar collapse simultaneously when Saudi Arabia makes this thing. First, they need to cover their six and their, and their 12, that being protect themselves. And they've done that by aligning with the BRICS, with China, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Russia, and all of the others. So that's well, that's the bad news from outside the shores, and the bad news from inside our shores would be the weaponizing of the banking system, I guess you could call it. Janet Yellen told the representative of Oklahoma when he asked, Madam Secretary, will you protect and bail out all of my constituents in Oklahoma if a regional bank goes bust? She said, no, we will need to have an uber majority of the FOMC, which is the Fed, the FDIC, myself and the president, to decide if they are systemic enough. But Carrie, these regional banks, almost 5,000 of them, are responsible for 70% of all the small business loans in this country. The small businesses have always been representative of nearly 40% of U.S. GDP. And even more shot when you look at what's happening to commercial real estate since the, the pandemic, they are responsible for the majority of the commercial real estate loans, not the big skyscrapers that JP and Citi and Morgan Stanley might back. Over $1 trillion was yanked out of these small regional banks mm. over the last week in search of safety in the commercial banking system because their, their money markets are paying a greater return than the CDs in the banks, which are systemic and will fail. And when they do fail, if they're not systemic enough, they might be backstop.